God uses the wicked for his own purposes. He allows their wickedness to accomplish his will, and it's interesting to see that. People often ask the question, how could a good God allow all these wicked things to come to pass? Well, the first reason is always that there's sin in the world, no one is perfect. And no one receives, according to the sins, what their, what their sins deserve. Nothing which can happen to us is, is as bad as we deserve to get. But God uses the wicked as his sword to uh, punish the other wicked people and at times to purify the righteous, to drive the righteous to him. Often in our lives, if God wouldn't use wicked people to uh, send trials our way, we wouldn't have the opportunity to rely on God the way we need to. We wouldn't have the, uh, the, the force behind our need if we had no needs. There wouldn't be any uh, urgency to trust in God. We might just be inclined to rely on our own strength and to think that we everything was fine and we didn't need God. But God uses the wicked, which is his sword, and David asked for God to deliver him from the wicked, to take care of him, to protect him. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Lord. He asked him to deliver him from these people. He knows that these are God's hand. He knows God's using them. And he asked God also to deliver him from them. We see David isn't charging God uh, with foolishness. Remember Job. And uh, Job said, when he lost all things, he said, The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When his wife came before him in a and told him to curse God and die. He said, Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord, and shall we not receive evil? And it says, And all these things did Job not sin with his lips, nor charge God foolishly. And we see here, David doesn't either. David sees that all things are from God, that these are from God's hand, and he asks God to deliver him, but he doesn't charge God with doing wrongdoing. He even, uh, he if you will, in this prayer, he recognizes that God is right to use the wicked as his sword against him. David knew he wasn't perfect, and he understood that. He knew he deserved the punishment for his sins. Very possibly this prayer was written after his sin with Bathsheba. And uh, the book of 2 Samuel, the uh, first ten chapters, are occupied with the blessings in King David's life with his victories. And all kinds of great things happen in Israel. Throughout the last uh, chapters, from chapter 11 and there on out in the book of 2 Samuel, pretty much nothing happens to David but trials and sufferings. And uh, it's because of his sin with Bathsheba, God takes his hand of protection off him and allows him to receive fourfold for the sin which he committed. And most of the rest of the book is occupied with those judgments. His son Amnon, his son Absalom, uh, sin grievously, and they both die because of it. Um, many other terrible things happen in his kingdom. And uh, David recognizes that the wicked is the sword of God, that God uses him, but he also recognizes that God is in control over him, and God has power over these wicked men. And God will only use them and allow them to go as far as he wants them to go, and they can go no further. Notice here, he says about the wicked men, which have their portion in this life, whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. He says these wicked people, they have their substance in this life. Sometimes people wonder, why is it that these people who are wicked have all these things going for them, and everything's going great for them? The Job even note, writes about this. He speaks about this in, um, in the book of Job. He talks about how the wicked have all these things before them. How everything seems to be going great for them. But notice, he says, which have their portion in this life. Remember what happens to the wicked in eternity. In uh, Psalm chapter 79, Asaph uh, the psalm is occupied with Asaph uh, noticing 
about how the wicked, everything seems to be going great for them. And then he stops and he ponders about how God judges the wicked in the end. And it might seem to go great with the wicked for a while, and it might seem to go great with them for a time, but the end of the wicked is great judgment. And uh, the end of the righteous is always blessed. The wicked, have, they have these things in this life, but they don't have anything for eternity. All they have for eternity is eternal judgment. In verse 15 it says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. The wicked looks forward to hell and eternity of judgment. The righteous, we look forward to God's face. We look forward to heaven. We look forward to being satisfied with God. We shouldn't be envious of the wicked. We shouldn't be too troubled when trials come upon us. We shouldn't let these things trouble us. The wicked, when he dies, he's got an eternity of suffering. But us, the saved, when we die, we have an eternity with God. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present are not equal to be compared with the exceeding weight of glory which shall be revealed in us. It says in um, Romans chapter 8. We as believers, we have great things to look forward to from God. And so, we don't need to worry about the wicked or about the things of the wicked. Look with me, if you will, though, at Psalm chapter 66. Psalm 66, verses 18 through 20. In Psalm 17, David prays out to God for God to hear him because, because he's walking with God, because his heart is right with God. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. <clears throat> but verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. If we keep sin in our heart, if we know we've got unconfessed sin before God, it hinders our prayers. It takes away our fellowship from God, and God can't answer our prayers. He won't answer our prayers because we're not relying on Him. We're relying on ourselves for our ways, for our direction in our life. What kind of prayer is it if you come before God and say, God, I want your will for my life, and then we do our own way anyway? How can God answer a prayer of, God, please guide me and direct me if you're going to do what you want anyway? He can't. He won't. How is God supposed to answer a prayer of, God, please deliver me if you're just fixing to deliver yourself anyway? If we as believers are regarding iniquity in our hearts, if our hearts have unconfessed sin in them, our prayers will be hindered. But verily God hath heard me, and hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. God hears our prayers, and he's greatly merciful to us. And God extends the uh, invitation always in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we have sin in our hearts, if we have iniquity in our hearts, if we find it there, it's as simple as confessing it and getting it right with God. God wants to hear our prayers. He loves to hear our prayers. He loves to answer prayers. But our sin separates us from God. The encouragement is tonight is to pray with an open, with a clean heart before God, not with a uh, fake heart, not with a prayer which comes out of feigned lips. To trust in God for all things and not to rely on ourselves for our deliverance, for our strength, and to, to uh, remember that we have eternity to look forward to, that uh, we don't need the things of the wicked, we don't need the ways of the wicked, because there, then thereof are the ways of death. So, the encouragement is tonight, pray before God, pray with a clean heart, and uh, expect God to answer your prayers as you pray in His will. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you are a God who hears prayers, that you love us, and that you gave us your word to show us how to pray. Help us to pray before you with a clean heart, and, uh, not to regard iniquity in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're dismissed. Oh,